Decima, the revolution lasted um, in the phase that we're discussing it for just over four years. Um, there's a question as to whether that's enough time to determine its success or its failure and its impact on the region. What you, you mentioned question of four years was that was not long enough. Is it long enough? Have we learned enough? Well, the process of uh, colonialization in Grenada lasted 475 years. Grenada was colonized by the Spanish, by the French, and by the British. And it is not until 1974 that this small Caribbean island attained independence, nominal political independence, from a major colonial power, one shared by many of the Caribbean islands. Now, within, from 1974 to 1979, which is the coming to power of um, a revolutionary government, and in fact, before that, Grenada existed as a new colonial uh, country under the rule of Eric Gehry, who is a well-known uh, Caribbean uh, despotic leader. And the conditions of uh, oppression and underdevelopment um, were, were I, I can say, very highly developed. The Puerto Rican model had been introduced in Grenada. It was called um, Operation Bootstraps, pull yourself up by your boots. And this led really to increased unemployment, to the alienation of a large um, section of the, of the society, youth and women, and the poverty question intensified. So that really what you had was a classic neo-colonial country or co a colony becoming more and more entrenched in poverty and underdevelopment and backwardness under a, 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 a leader who was um, really useless for the advancement of the country. It is in that context that the New Jewel Movement br brought a new um, government in 1979. And so one has to judge what was achieved in four years against the background of decades of poverty, decades of backward political formations in the country. So if you ask the question, was four years sufficient to make a complete transformation from the ills and the traps of underdevelopment into a modern, scientifically organized, social, economic, and political system? Of course, the answer is resoundingly no, and cannot be. Uh, so anyone who was looking or continues to look for all the solutions to have been made in four years, I think that is extraordinarily dangerous. Mr. Okay. Chairman, I wonder yeah. if you'd allow me just to pick up very quickly on that with your permission, because I think this is a very important issue we raise, you know. It, 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 uh, many people become very impatient about what they think revolution should accomplish, and I think sometimes the whole Grenada experiment is being very unfairly blamed in a ahistorical context. I mean, look on the uh, so-called American Revolution, 1776. It was in 1789 that they began to redefine some constitutional shape 13 years later. To give an example, the Russians pulled off their thing back in 1917, and I believe they're still talking about the stage of being the dictatorship of the proletariat and not yet having accomplished their ideal aims. So in that sense, to transform a structure in a revolutionary way within a period of four years with that type of historical liability that the Simmer is talking about, it would be an absolute impossibility for any regime. But moreover, you must look not only on the capacity of regimes to revolutionize a country, but on the objective conditions of the systems to be revolutionized. And this is exactly what she's getting at. When you look at Grenada, its small size, the nature of its social formations, a strong peasantry, peasant tradition, the economic, very underdeveloped economic infrastructure, not sufficient to sustain a real revolution. This has to be built to make revolution meaningful. Very, very difficult and turbulent politics in the past. The amazing thing to me is that so much was accomplished with those limitations. I have not mentioned the ongoing international limitations of the United States breathing down Grenada's throat and the historical limitations in the context of Cuba having pulled something off. It becomes almost next to impossible for any Caribbean region to try to pull something off without extra pressure and hostility from the United States. The amazing thing is that we must look not merely what was accomplished, but what was attempted. And I think we can also look on the Grenada Revolution, not only in terms of what it tried to accomplish, but in terms of the anxieties it produced. Any little country like Grenada, which produced so many anxieties in the Eastern Caribbean, they feared it. It was a threat. You, <laughs> which, what kind of threat? The possible fear of example is something I think we must keep in mind. And I think in that context, 
we have a much better understanding as to what was going on. Okay, Merle, you've had um, experiences in Grenada and also in the rest of the region. Um, is there any possibility, based on your experience in Grenada and your knowledge of the region, for instance, is there any possibility of us moving in the direction of not just four years and setback, but of changing the kind of society, dealing with the parameters that Lusty is talking about, to the point where we can actually have successive revolutions in the region outside of the Cuban model? Is it yeah. possible? I, I think it is eminently possible. I think that one of the, one of the lessons of Grenada is the extent to which a lot of groundwork has to be done in terms of education and the raising of consciousness. And, you know, the, the other side of that coin is, is um, getting people to participate. And I, I think that, you know, the achievements of Grenada, when they, they are weighed, uh, you know, have to be, be, be weighed in those terms. The extent to which the, the revolution was able to, to sort of harness the, the, the energies of the people and, um, you know, get them interested in their own development, but also get them interested and involved in working out solutions that suited them and their environment, which can't be done unless you, you do the, the, the other thing, which is to, to, to educate people about their, their, their situation. I mean, the, the, the political ignorance of, of the people in the Caribbean in, 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 in general, I think, is, is um, you know, um, you, you know an, an objective fact that is, is, is part of what is, is, is holding back or the development. The media in the Caribbean are not about you know, educating us politically. And I think that um, in, in Grenada, the, the efforts that were made on all fronts to, to, to in, involve people in the, the, the business of, of, of transformation were, you know, most, um, well, they, they are, it's, it's one of the things that we need to, 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 to examine and emulate. Of course, the press was not allowing the, the rest of the region to, to, to learn about that either. But I think it has to be documented. You know, if I may add here to make, to make a further point, which is where Loxy left off. If you look at, and if you, so often people ask me, you know, again, you know, why, why in four years, you know, we didn't have a definitive socialist model in the country? Mm -hmm. um, what were the real achievements of those four and a half years? And certainly we all have to reflect on it. And coming from the long, dark distance of mm -hmm. on a development and and openness in the economy, and really a total disorientation on the question of development, and even independence. I think the greatest achievement in four years, the greatest achievement was that in four years, Grenada could even have, as a people, in an orientation for change, mm -hmm. and of course, mm -hmm. a commitment to it. That, just by itself, is perhaps the most significant undertaking, never mind the material gains and benefits. Mm -hmm. But to say to a people who have been psychologically disoriented towards self-reliance, for example, or people who look always to the metropolitan, or people who are anti-communist in, in fundamental development, or people who are, who are you know, disoriented as to the, the possibilities for new forms of political participation, to have given our people collectively a, a, a view and a will and a direction that we can begin to think about a new path that is uniquely Caribbean, that is just, that is democratic, that is viable, that will contribute to the long-term solutions of poverty at home and in the region. That in itself must be seen as a major accomplishment. And having not only been done in four years, but we were able to go beyond that, to get the orientation into practice and be able to get people to participate. I think that's really what we should be asking. Let and me add a 30-second yeah, yeah. footnote to mm -hmm. that, and I mean exactly that, too. Because I think you raised a very important point there, and I think it must be linked to, to the factor of size or lack of it. Uh, because here we're speaking about among one of the smallest territories, both in terms of demography and physical size and economic size mm -hmm. in the Caribbean. And here what we see happening under the Re Grenada Revolution, not whether it succeeded or not, but it was being said clearly that lack of size ought not to be a barrier to development, but it could be an opportunity for creativity. Mm -hmm. And I think just the message being communicated there is important in the sense that you describe it. Yes, um, uh, right. Ricky, mm -hmm. um, uh, Merle raised the question uh, that the media is one of the factors that is really inhibiting revolution and change in the region. 
by either miseducating or not educating at all. As someone who has spent a long time um, in this business and who has had your f more than your fair share <laughs> of persecution for trying to do something about it, is she correct? Um, what is, is the media, in fact, uh, an agent of um, anti-revolution in the region? And what, if anything, can be done about it? Uh, sadly, I have to agree with Merle, <coughs> Claude, as you know, being a member of the profession yourself, and that um, the media in the region has largely contributed to the miseducation of the people of the Caribbean, in the same way that the media of this country has greatly contributed to the miseducation of its own people and the people in the entire Western Hemisphere. I found it um, appalling as I go around uh, in various areas in North America to discover that people who are supposedly intelligent uh, do not seem to understand the basic problems of the Caribbean. And I become very compassionate toward them only because I'm aware that we in the Caribbean do not understand our own problems and who we are. And I think that after Grenada, we are left with a horrendous communications problem to get people to understand themselves why it was that a Caribbean territory, a member of the Commonwealth of Nations, was invaded by the, the most powerful military nation in the world with the connivance of a handful of Caribbean states. To get them to understand that means you'll have to get them to understand what sovereignty is all about, what nationalism is all about. Um, Loxi introduced the argument about strategies. Um, you can talk about strategies, you can talk about models, some people talk about initiatives. If you talk about initiative, there's a, there you, you, uh, you have to enter into discussion with the relevance of Regan's initiative, which is pre being presented by the media as a Caribbean-based initiative. It's Regan's initiative, which comes after Kennedy's initiative, which was, in fact, the Alliance of Progress, which was a massive failure, and so will be the CBI. But if we stick with Loxley's strategies as the same for models, I would like to narrow that down for the purpose of this discussion to the Anglophone Caribbean, that within that uh, grouping, you had what you call the Grenada Initiative. And you had the Guyana Initiative, which was much earlier. And it is interesting to me, as a Guyanese and as a Caribbean journalist, to find that even in this discussion, Guyana does not surface until I raise it now, in terms of a socialist model for transformation. And I think it is rightly so, because Guyana, under the regime of President Burnham, has successfully conned international public opinion into believing that social transformation is taking place in Guyana. And it is interesting that many people seem to accept that as being a fact. But in fact, what is going on in Guyana is an experiment is a trisectoral economy. And we were told that cooperative would be the, the dominant factor in that experiment. As it is today, it is rather marginalized. And Ghana is not a cooperative socialist republic in terms of um, development patterns. It is more or less a slogan. In the case of Grenada, we are left to answer the question now whether it is realistic to expect and that a small island state in, that par in this part of the world can in fact successfully undertake a revolutionary process all by itself, without, and, and of course, take sides, exercise its right to take sides, as Grenada did. And being one who is sympathetic to the Grenadian experiment, uh, I'm raising it a highly provocative question, as in fact, whether you can be small, you can carry out a revolution, as they saying, from a, a reformist approach to structural transformation, and take sides, as Grenada did. 